Okay, so we've got our baguettes rising on the windowsill under the little shell cap. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a bolognese sauce. Now, the beauty of bolognese sauce is it's so versatile, okay? So you can use it to make lasagna, you can use it to make spaghetti bolognese, you can use it to have, some people like to crack an egg into it, if you'll put it in a pan with extra tomatoes, crack an egg into it and bake it. So a bolognese sauce is something that's really, really handy to have in the freezer. So you can make this, provided you don't use pre-frozen mints, okay? So what I've got here in the pan is 400 grams of steak mince, and it's just browning away the finest, okay? So just turn that down a little bit so it doesn't burn. I've got one large red onion, so I'm going to make enough bolognese sauce to make a lasagna for five, okay? But 400 grams of meat is more than enough. You don't need any more than that. So we're just going to peel this onion and chop it finely. I like a red onion and bolognese because I just think it gives a lovely, uh, a lovely colour effect. Okay, so just peel that in, hopefully without crying. Now, I don't like an overly herby uh, bolognese sauce, so I will use um, garlic, onion, salt, pepper, chilli, um, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and if your tomatoes aren't particularly strong or particularly red, you can pop a little bit of tomato sauce in. But just be aware that tomato sauce has sugar in it, so it can make your sauce a little bit sweet. So just make sure you taste it as you go, have a little taste, make sure that it's, it's right for you, okay? So, I can feel the eyes starting to go already. Get a muscle for this. Just chop it as fine as you can. Right. As I say, the mince is browned. Don't brown your mince with anything in it, just mince. No oil, no fat, no nothing. No salt, no pepper, nothing at all. Just brown your mince plain the way that it is. Now, if it's steak mince, good quality steak mince, less than 5% fat, that's what you're looking for because what you don't want is a pan full of meat and fat, okay? So, steak mince. Um, then add your onion. I'm going to mix that through. It smells absolutely amazing already. Now, once your meat is browned, completely and your onion is in, then you can add your salt and pepper. If you add your salt before your meat is browned, you'll seal the meat and not let the flavour out, okay? So just a couple of good sprinkles of salt. I'm just using um, a roughly ground sea salt and then another couple of good sprinkles of pepper, okay? Again, you'll season it to taste your own way. I don't like any more salty. So just let that sit for a second whilst I chop up this garlic. Now, again, just give it a mush and that bursts the skin, it makes it an awful lot easier to peel. These are tiny little cloves. I don't know why the garlic's so small just now. So I'm going to use maybe, I think I've got half a dozen here, maybe seven. But it's because they're tiny. I would usually use two nice big cloves of garlic. Okay, so I'll just quickly peel these. See, once you burst the skin, it comes off really, really easy. Okay, so just Say I'm going to make a lasagna this evening, so I will show you how to make your own uh, bechamel sauce, which is the white sauce that you get in lasagna. I don't use a cheese sauce all the way through because I think it makes it far, far, far too heavy. It makes it kind of stodgy almost. So I like to use a bechamel sauce, and then on the top you would add your cheddar or your parmesan or whatever cheese you like, mozzarella if you don't like anything too strong. So I like to add cheddar, so I'll just put a bit of cheddar on top, then pop it in the oven and bake it with the finest. So this is our nuts, teeny tiny little baby garlic by the looks of things. Okay, so we're just going to chop this. Again, just chop it roughly, but try and get it quite small so that you don't pick bits. I'm still suffering from that onion, that is a still thing. Wow, strong garlic. This smells so good. Okay, so happy with that, just roughly chop, nice and fine. I'll just pop this in the pan as well. So now we've got our steak mince, our salt, our pepper, our red onion, nice big red onion. Half a dozen cloves of garlic, or as I say, if you've got big garlic, just a couple. I'm going to give that a little stir. The smell of the garlic is going to be amazing in about one second. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add chilli. Now, I'm using easy chilli. So you can use a whole red chilli if you like it a wee bit spicy. You can use a half a red chilli. I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon of easy chilli. So just take it straight out of the jar and straight into the pan. Again, you know yourself how spicy you like your food to be. 
okay? So this base sauce that I'm doing just now, before we add anything else, is your base for chilli. So if you were then to add into this mix at the moment, the way that it is, a couple of teaspoons of, good heat teaspoons of cumin, um, and a couple of heat teaspoons of paprika at this stage, then go ahead and add your tomatoes, and then right at the end, chuck in a tin of kidney beans, you will have the most amazing chilli. You might want to turn up the heat a wee bit as well, so you might want to add a wee bit more chilli, eh, but it, that's how you get a really, really good chilli. We'll do that another day though. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this in the ninja. So again, I like one tin of tomatoes for texture, but I don't like them big. So we'll just pop them on here. Give me two seconds. So I'm just going to blend this for a second. The reason the tomatoes change colour, the reason they go like this is because you're putting air into it when you blend them. So I blend them just for a second, just to take the big bits out because it was peeled, a full tin of peeled plum tomatoes. Okay, so I'm just going to pour this in now, come up the heat a wee bit. Pop that in there. Give that stuff through. Now, obviously because we're making lasagna, we want to make quite a bit of sauce. So I also have um, a little carton of passata. Now, passata is just tomatoes blended, but then sieved. So it takes all the bits out. So there's no rough ends, there's no seeds. So you've got a good half a, half a kilo of passata there, and that's going to allow us to make a lovely, rich sauce. We smell what not. I like to open my cartons and give them a squeeze, if I can. This one's being awkward. Because look at all that passata that would be left in there. Otherwise, the other thing you can do is pour a little bit of cold water into the carton and give it a little rinse around and then pour that in. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in a second with the can. So I have the can of the tomatoes here. I've just swirled some cold water around about it to get all the tomato out of it. Pour that in there. And that's how got all the tomato. So there's no leftovers, no waste. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that I like to add to um, spaghetti bolognese, just for flavour. You can add, some people like to add Worcester sauce, which is lovely, but I like to add a little bit of um, sweet balsamic dressing, Worcester sweet balsamic vinegar. So not a lot, maybe a bit of teaspoon. And it just gives a lovely, rich, dark colour and it adds a sweetness. So if you're adding tomato sauce, that's what I'm saying to be careful. If you do my recipe and add the balsamic vinegar, be careful if you're adding tomato sauce because it can make it too sweet. It can add far too much sweetness. And you would need to knock that back with acidity then, so you need to have to look at maybe add a wee bit more vinegar or so. Just be careful and taste it once you, you know, as you go so that you've got it the way you like it. Now, that's gorgeous and rich and dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the lid on it. We're going to cook it for about, probably, I'm going to let it cook for the next hour and a half anyway. You can cook it in as little as 45 minutes. In 45 minutes, it will be ready to eat. In 30 minutes, it'll probably be ready to eat because it's good quality statements. But I prefer to let it cook on for a wee while and let it settle and let it gather its flavours. So I'll probably cook it on until about maybe half past four. And then I'll turn it off and let it sit and then I'll heat it through again for dinner. So come back later on and we'll finish up again.